This will be sure. For Melanie, let's make that sure her audio is working since she is muted at the moment. Okay. This is Melanie's introduction. Introductions are important. Practice them, improve them, use them. I'm applying for numerous professional speaking gigs. And guess where most of my competitors are losing out? Their introduction to sell themselves. So practice them right here in Toastmasters in your various clubs. The title of this presentation is CSI Central Florida. Here's what she was practicing. Pushing some boundaries to bring some humor to briefings. Please share some round robin feedback on the humor of this core speech. Please welcome Melanie, our contest MC, introducing us to the proceedings. Good morning, Toastmasters and guests. Welcome to today's episode of CSI, smack bang in the middle of Florida, confident speaker investigation. We watch five evaluators in our Orlando and Cyber Labs analyze a speech. Today we have champions of 270 members who are non, not baffle gabbers. I know other contestants would have killed someone's internet to be here today. The purpose of the evaluation contest is to recognize the best as encouragement to all. During the contest, everyone will be muted except for the Toastmaster and the current speaker. It's a social media free zone today until the end of the contest. So please turn off your noise making devices now. Before chat is disabled, I'll ask you, please type a one in the chat if you're excited about today. Anyone typing a one? No one is excited, either that or well, the chat has been already disabled. All our videos are to be off except for the Toastmaster, the contestant, and the timer. The timing is a green light on two minutes, a yellow light at two and a half minutes, and a green light on three minutes. A contestant will be disqualified if they speak for less than one minute, 30 seconds, or more than three minutes and 30 seconds. A test speaker will give a confident speech to investigate. At the conclusion of the test speaker, all contestants will go into another room and the contestants will be called back to the main room one at a time. I will ask each speaker a series of questions and then to repeat after me. Toastmasters on Easter Sunday is the best. At that time, we will resolve technical difficulties. And then I will introduce each speaker by saying their name, a brief pause, and then their name again. For the audience's viewing pleasure, I invite you to change to speaker view in the top right corner of your screen. So you don't have to use your confident speaker investigation toolkit to view your speaker. After each speaker, there will be a one minute silence for the judges to complete their ballot. And audience, there's no need to whisper. It's not survivor tribal council. It's worse. Can you add points? for your favorite contestant with someone whispering next to your ear. After the final speaker, there will be silence until our chief judge leaves the room. This may feel excruciating, like the final episode to crown the American Idol winner, but it's worth it.
unfortunately, at this time, there will be no bar service until the end of the contest. But on a less serious note, each contestant selects their own speech topics. Some of the content may be personal in nature and contain language, ideas, or beliefs that some audiences may consider sensitive. No photos or videos are to be taken while contestants are speaking. You will have ample time when, you, when I call on the paparazzi. And don't get in trouble with our online bouncers, our sarda at arms. We will be barred from entering or leaving, except for emergencies and during the silence between contestants and after the chief judge leaves. The speaking order, or the important speaking order. Number one, Diana Troy. Number two, Nancy Drew. Number three, Inspector Gadgets. Number four, Horatio Kane. And number five, Dr. Fraser Crane. Don't think I need to repeat that. So finally, I ask Chief Judge, Judge Judy of the Tribal Council. I mean, judges and time is ready. Let the contest begin. And thank you to our wonderful audience. I now hand back to our wonderful man in the hat. Marvelous, marvelous. Before I hand it over to our my dear friend May for facilitation, I'm going to sneak in a word. I like the fact you stay consistent with your theme. You snuck something in all the time. Awesome. Take my hat off to you, my friend. Let's pass it over to May Trend to do a little facilitation round robin support. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. I am honored to have this baffle bag. <laughs> baffle bag. <laughs> I love this word. I don't know what it means so far, but I will <laughs> keep working on it. Anyway, would I have the honor to call maybe Francine, then William? Melanie, this speech was not a baffle gab. You did a beautiful job adding humor to an otherwise boring speech that we hear over and over again. Brilliant. And I especially love when you got to naming the contestants. And I was expecting just for regular names. And then you hit us with uh, Nancy Drew and Fraser and it was just unexpected and that's what really made it funny back to you may thank you william then i'm heidi are you participating william all right is it my turn now Yes. Please. But you're calling on someone else. Okay. After you. Okay, after me. Yep. So, and I just said so. But <laughs> <laughs> don't want to turn this into a. Me. Don't want to turn yeah. this into a baffle gag and evaluation. But I, I mentioned earlier in my headline about the use of deadpan or dry humor, and this is a classic example of applying this because I don't watch CSI, but I am going to assume that. You know, crime and all that's generally something that's not always funny. So I think that was a unique use of dry humor there. Thank you, William. Heidi, would you like to give a feedback or later? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I prefer listen first. Okay, thank you. Thank you, no problem. How about Mr. Tom? Oh, he, he did. Melanie, I like that you did keep that consistency through. That, that was owning your theme. So that was one of the best parts about it. Uh, be aware in 
as some of us have been to a couple of hundred thousand of these contests, having fun with it is important. And I think you tried to have a lot of fun with it. Here's your opportunity to have even more fun. Engage with your physicality. I know you continue to watch your screen to improve when technology is blocking you. So we recognize that. That means you're aware of the situation. Practice and think about if you're on the real stage with real people in a real room, not just virtual, and incorporate a few of those. Hey, put that phone away, things. That could help add to it. Thank you, my friend. Vicky, would you? I know you're a timer. Would you like to participate? Sure. Thank you. I have to get my timing started. First of all, Melanie, I just thought it was a great use of puns and so forth. I love the title, you know, the confident speaker investigation or CSI. I would agree with Tom, I think a little bit more nuance between the serious and then when you kick in a pun, when you say something, there's going to be uh, no bar surface, you know, give yourself a little bit of a pause. You had time, I'm the timer, so I know that. Mm -hmm. You also um, had some references that we could look at. And uh, I loved, I just loved all the little puns you put in there, but I don't think you couched them in enough space so that we could absorb them. The free, the social media free zone and the, the bouncers that are the sergeant at arms. Those were great little tips. Just take a little bit more time. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Are we good? Uh, marvelous. Thank you. Thank you, May, and all who supported. 